Hello friends, uh, today uh, we are going to discuss a very important concept uh, which is part of ISLM model uh, that is called uh, Fiscal Policy Multiplier and Monetary Policy Multiplier. Uh, why this Fiscal Policy Multiplier and Monetary Policy Multiplier? Are relevant. They are relevant because as we have seen in ISLM model that goods market and money market they are interdependent. Given this interdependency to what extent fiscal policy is going to be effective in influencing the equilibrium level of income in the economy. Right? Similarly to what extent monetary policy is going to be effective in uh, changing the level of GDP or equilibrium level of income in the economy. So fiscal policy multiplier and monetary policy multiplier measures the effect of fiscal policy and monetary policy respectively on equilibrium level of income. Right? As you know that income here stands for GDP and change in GDP has got citrus paribus implications for employment in the economy, right? So fiscal policy multiplier and monetary policy multiplier are major considerations when you are deciding fiscal policy and when you are deciding monetary policy. They guide us whether fiscal policy would be effective or monetary policy would be effective or both will be equally effective, right? So to understand that we study fiscal policy multiplier and monetary policy multiplier. Now in case of fiscal policy multiplier, I would like to uh, uh, take your attention to one more concept of multiplier that we have done in Keynesian model of income determinations. And that multiplier, generally you might have uh, heard it or you have heard it actually when you were a student of economics, that's called investment multiplier right or government expenditure multiplier or transfer payment multiplier or tax multiplier right now if you look at uh, those multipliers right they also measure change uh, effect of change in autonomous components of aggregate demand on equilibrium level of income for example uh, you have investment multiplier what is in investment multiplier measure? Investment multiplier measures the change in equilibrium level of income due to change in investment level, right? Similarly, you have government expenditure multiplier. What does it measure? It measures change in equilibrium level of income due to change in government expenditure, right? So there, the multiplier measures effectiveness of change in autonomous investment on equilibrium level of income change in government expenditure on equilibrium level of income, right? Uh, however, when there we measure the effectiveness of government expenditure on equilibrium level of income, we assume that it has no feedback relationship with the money market. Money market is isolated. Money market is considered to be constant, right? So when income level rises in goods market, it has no repercussions on money market. However, ISLA model has clearly shown you that when you do anything in goods market and that has got implications for equilibrium level of income, your money market also gets affected. And when there is any change in money market, that also gets reflected in change in goods market, right? So the both markets are interdependent. Goods market and money market affect each other. So given this reality of interconnectedness of money market and goods market, fiscal policy multiplier here, right, measures effect of or effectiveness of rising government expenditure on equilibrium income, right? Similarly, monetary policy multiplier also measures effect of or effectiveness of rise of money supply on equilibrium level of income. So let us derive fiscal policy multiplier. So we have a case of fiscal policy multiplier. Okay. First of all, this fiscal policy multiplier 
is defined as nothing but effectiveness of rise of government expenditure on equilibrium level of income assuming interconnectedness between goods market and money market right so uh, how do we derive it we derive primarily on the basis of uh, what is the prevalent equilibrium level of income right assuming interdependence of goods market and money market as you know that through is and lm equations we are able to derive through algebraic approach we are able to derive equilibrium level of income and what is that equilibrium level of income that equilibrium level of income is written as y is equal to you have gamma multiplied by a bar right plus again gamma into b upon h into m bar by p right this is what your equilibrium level of income that we derive on the basis of is and lm equations right now this equation becomes very crucial to derive effectiveness of fiscal policy on equilibrium level of income now if i ask you which part of uh, these two terms on the right hand side consists the components of fiscal policy remember here fiscal policy we are defining primarily in terms of government expenditure right or you can also include transfer payment right so which component uh, not the second one m by p is the real money supply which is decided by the central bank in other words given price level that we assume that in keynesian model price is sticky price is constant therefore it is the uh, uh, what you call central bank which decides the magnitude of m and we take uh, what you call uh, uh, m as given so m by p is given right so m by p stands for monetary policy aspect but on the other hand you have b b is again nothing but a parameter measuring the sensitivity of investment to change in interest rate which is again given in short term h is the sensitivity of uh, money demand to change in interest rates again that is also given and lambda sorry is uh, so gamma so gamma is basically uh, uh, as we have uh, 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 derived equilibrium level of income using ISLM, IS and LM equations there we have gamma to be equal to H uh, alpha G upon H plus uh, what do you call B K alpha G, right? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, what do you call? Uh, this is what your H alpha G upon H plus. Uh, uh, what do you call? Uh, yeah. Uh, H plus B K alpha G, right? So okay, fine. So this is what your gamma is. Okay. So this ga gamma is decided by H. Again, that is sensitivity of money demand to change in interest rate. Alpha G is the traditional multiplier, right? Traditional multiplier, which is nothing but 1 upon 1 minus C into 1 minus T. If you do away the tax rate, then you have alpha g to be equal to 1 upon 1 minus c so that is a traditional multiplier okay so multiplier is also given because all those variables are or parameters are given right so what do you call this gamma is also fixed okay now so none of the component of the second term are associated with fiscal policy right uh, Tax rate might be there, but then we are assuming that the government does not change tax. Okay, uh, 
now uh, and of course no one is you know in the second term no component is part of uh, government expenditure but if you look at the first term it is the a bar which is associated with government expenditure what is a bar as we have known that a bar is equal to c bar plus c t r bar plus i bar plus g bar plus net export bar right now it is in a bar that you have what you call government expenditure so suppose if government expenditure changes then what will happen income will change but the question arises that to what extent income will change right so very simply we can find out the uh, what you call change in equilibrium level of income due to change in government expenditure by differentiating this what you call equilibrium uh, income equations with respect to a right so we can write uh, d y upon d a right okay so basically change in a bar is equal to and since a bar appears here so if you differentiate this right we will get gamma right and the other term becomes zero so what do we get we get change in income uh, ratio of change in income to change in autonomous components of aggregate demand right is equal to gamma right so this is what the value of fiscal policy multiplier right now we are calling it fiscal policy multiplier primarily we are assuming that this uh, change in a bar is primarily because of government expenditure right so we can also write it as change in y upon change in what you call uh, uh, a bar right is equal to gamma right this is what you call fiscal fiscal policy multiplier fpm right this is how we derive fiscal policy multiplier now if you compare fiscal policy multiplier and traditional multiplier you will find that the fiscal policy multiplier is lower than the traditional multiplier the reason for this the economic logic for this i mean if you calculate actually you will find that uh, value of gamma is less than value of alpha g right if the parameters values are given you can calculate and find out but what is the economic logic for this the economic logic for this is uh, in this case when you have traditional multiplier traditional government expenditure multiplier there we are assuming that goods market and money market they are isolated right so when government expenditure rises right equilibrium income rises right and it rises by the extent of rising uh, uh, by the extent of value of multiplier okay and uh, 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 there is no effect of rise in equilibrium level of income on money market right and therefore money market also does not affect any component of uh, what you call uh, 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 aggregate demand in uh, the economy however here it's different how is it different suppose if government expenditure rises right and therefore a bar rises right what happens through multiplier equilibrium income rises but the moment equilibrium income rises right in money market you will observe rising money demand and when money demand rises given money supply rate of interest rises the moment rate of interest rises what happens investment because we are assuming investment to be function of interest rate so investment falls and when investment falls that again through multiplier will reduce the level of equilibrium income so what do you have that here rise in g raises government expenditure right uh, rise in g raises equilibrium level of income but then rise in equilibrium income also falls due to fall in investment right and that fall in investment is taking place because of rising interest rate in money uh, market right so here uh, some portions of rise in government expenditure is offset by fall in investment private investment 
and therefore price in equilibrium income is less than what it could have happened when goods and money market were not interlinked and that is why the value of gamma is always less than the value of alpha j so this is what your fiscal policy multiplier is okay now uh, then comes monetary policy multiplier okay so so if you look at monetary policy multiplier monetary policy multiplier right what is monetary policy multiplier i have defined previously monetary policy multi multiplier measures the effectiveness of rise in money supply on equilibrium level of income or effectiveness of fall in money supply on equilibrium level of income or effectiveness of change in money supply on equilibrium level of income right that is what your monetary policy measures and this is what going to decide to what extent our monetary policy would be effective in changing the level of income right so if you look at uh, monetary policy multiplier how do we derive we derive by differentiating because we are assuming that there is change in m by p i mean of course p remains constant but the numerator changes so therefore m by p that is real uh, balance supply changes right so uh, how do we find out we can find out by differentiating the same equilibrium level of income equations that we have derived on the basis of is and lm equations right uh, 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 differentiating that with respect to m by p right so what do we get we get dy upon dm by p now we are assuming that there is no change in government expenditure so this whole term is constant therefore it becomes zero what is left if you differentiate this gamma b upon h m by p so we will be left with gamma into b upon h right this is what your i mean if you want to write it further down so we can write it delta y upon delta m by p is equal to gamma b upon h this is what you call monetary policy multiplier monetary policy multiplier mpm right so here to what extent monetary policy will be effective in affecting the equilibrium level of income is decided by the value of gamma right and b upon h right so uh, for example let us say if uh, uh, what do you call our uh, rbi governor raises money supply but then simultaneously the b value has fallen right sensitivity of investment to interest rate has fallen and that might happen in certain situations so what will happen that it raises what do you call money supply but then because of fall in b that money supply may not raise the level of income to the extent that uh, rbi governor thought of right so uh, so here uh, you have got uh, what do you call two types of multipliers discussing to what extent a finance minister would be effective in raising the equilibrium level of income and that is measured by fiscal policy multiplier and monetary policy multiplier measures that to what extent our uh, governor of the central bank would be effective in changing the equilibrium level of income so they may intend to be effective but then macroeconomic conditions which are determining value of gamma and value of b gamma into b upon h are also responsible factors in making fiscal policy and monetary policy uh, effective that's all thank you